While I'm waiting for some parts to turn up for the wren that I'm repairing, I thought we'd have a quick look at the next project, and this is it. It's an HH Tiger CPU. Uh, it's a bit of an unusual machine. It was built um, 82, 83, and it was built in uh, Cambridge. There was a, a rash of companies that popped up, existing companies that suddenly decided to get onto the computer market at that time. The number of unusual machines like this that uh, appeared and then disappeared very quickly uh, is quite surprising. This is a very strange machine in some ways. It's very advanced. It's got two CPUs. It's got a lot of features. There's a lot of um, expansion capability and there seems to be a bit of confusion in its design as to whether it's meant as a business machine uh, or a games platform or uh, something in between. It's, it's a bit of a, an odd one. It's um, as I say, very advanced. This doesn't work, so uh, as ever, we'll get the cover off, uh, have a look at it, and um, see what may be involved in getting it repaired. So with the cover removed, we can see uh, how it's laid out inside. We've got a nice big beefy power supply running across the top. Um, a bit concerned about this, there is a lot of corrosion in here, and um, with the age of the machine and the type of PCB this will have, yeah, there may well be a lot of corrosion on the PCB as well, uh, in which case it's possibly not going to be repairable, but we'll have a look at that later on. This is quite a nice layout uh, machine uh, for its time. A lot of uh, machines of the um, early to mid 80s were very poorly laid out and it made them very hard to work on. There's some interesting design aspects of this. Firstly, certain parts are not actually bolted in. And this is not an oversight or somebody's just left it loose. This is the way it was designed to be mounted. If you look on the inside of the case, you can see there are various mouldings that are there to support various parts uh, within the machine. The only thing that's a bit uh, unusual is the um, inductor that's over here which it looks like there is a place for it on the PCB, so quite why it's not there is a bit, um, a bit strange. Uh, there's nothing I can see in terms of space to prevent it from uh, being there. Whether this is a, a repair at some point, um, it doesn't appear to be. It looks like it's original, but we'll have a look on the underside of the board and see if it appears to have been reworked, but it does seem a bit strange. It's obviously there for um, some kind of filtering purpose, but putting an inductor on the end of a 18 inch long lead does tend to um, defeat the point of it to a certain extent. But uh, I'll take the power supply out, I'll take the keyboard out, and we'll have a look at the main board and see what sort of condition it's in. Now unfortunately it's not possible to get to the board from the bottom, um, it's just a solid uh, moulded piece. You can get to the connectors on the front edge, but uh, not the board itself. So it has to be taken uh, apart uh, from the top. So I'll do that next and then we'll see how the main board looks. Okay, so we've got the main board exposed. I've cut all the screws out. Uh, I have to say on first inspection, I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this particular machine. It's um, obviously had uh, a long life and has not been stored in particularly good uh, environment. So there's a lot of corrosion. Uh, some of the pins have just completely corroded away. There's a connector that's supposed to be here, but as you can see where it meets the board, the pin is almost completely gone. Um, that seems also to be the case for a lot of the IC sockets that are extremely loose. I'm assuming they will just pull off if you were to put any pressure on them. A lot of the IC pins are extremely rusty. Um, OK, we'll take it out, have a look at the underside, see if that has fared any better give us some idea as to whether it's been worked on very much. As I say, it's an interesting machine. It's got uh, two um, Z80s. Uh, so that's quite unusual for a machine of this era. And uh, we've got a 68809 over here as well. This, so this side is almost like a, a pet. And um, on this side, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like an 803. So it seems like quite a mixture of applications. I'm not quite sure what they were 
uh, trying to actually achieve with this machine but it's certainly a very interesting architecture. If anyone has a schematic for this uh, it would be extremely interesting to have a look at it. Uh, I will try and take images of the ROMs and uh, so if anyone has one of these and needs uh, ROM images then uh, that would be useful for them. I can see there are a lot of uh, modifications being made to this but uh, anyway, I'll pop the board out and uh, we'll have a look on the underside and see uh, how it looks. even worse than I was uh, actually expecting. Got some bits that have simply fallen off. And an awful lot of uh, modifications have been made to it. So we've got lots of little jumper wires. A lot of corrosion down at the uh, front end. There's been a lot of uh, work done on this. I can see almost half or at least half of the pins have been retouched at some point. I think I mentioned in the Wren, which is very similar age to this, very similar style of PCB. These PCBs are very troublesome, and especially once corrosion sets in, they are um, extremely uh, prone to, to failure. I've got no idea what's going on here as to uh, why there are so many wires bodged on the bottom. No idea where that's come from. Cut tracks as well, so it's been either modified or this was part of the um, build process. Okay, I don't know where this has come from. I'm suspecting it's from around here somewhere. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll contact the owner and see what he wants to do with this. But so, very unfortunate, but uh, sometimes you do come across machines like this where it's um, more bodged than original and it does make re uh, resurrecting them very difficult. But uh, as I say, I'll contact the owner and see what he wants me to do with it. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, any comments, um, suggestions as to what you think we should do with this, then um, please leave a comment.